Hi guys, this is the last reading and quiz that you'll have on this chapter. It's from pages 285 to 294 in the memory unit, and you will be taking this quiz on Monday, so you have over the weekend to read these pages. Um, there's not too many key terms in this unit. The first that we'll be talking about, and which is the most of this entire nine pages that you'll be reading is about, is about misinformation and how our memories are constructed or can be reconstructed in the wrong way. The misinformation effect is when you take um, misleading information and incorporate it into your own memory. So for instance, you may have thought that, um, exact one of the examples I gave in classes, you may have thought that the you had taken a hot air balloon ride because you saw a picture of yourself in a hot air balloon and so you reconstructed your memory to remember that event and how wonderful it was but in all reality you hadn't or you may remember that you crashed into the car when in fact it was not a crash you rolled into it uh, or the car rolled back into you and so it just it's when we take false information and we start to believe it um i the next you topic is source amnesia. Source amnesia, the famous example, is from uh, child psychologist Jean Piaget. He, we'll get to him a lot in the developmental psychology unit, uh, unit 9, which is coming up here in a bit, which I mentioned here, down here with him. But source amnesia is where you forget where you learned that information or where the memory came from. Uh, this happens all the time, right? You hear something and you tell somebody a cool fact that you heard about uh, Justin Timberlake or something, and you <laughs> you may even have told the person who told you, and they're like, uh, yeah, I knew that. I'm the one who told you about that. It's you, you forget the source of the information. Uh, Jean Piaget's famous example is he, he remembered and, he, and into his adult life that his nursemaid, which is basically a nanny, um, saved him from being abducted by somebody and he remembers this story that over and over and he 100 percent believed that it was him um that it was his story when in fact he learned in his adult life that it didn't happen to him at all his nurse or his nanny rather um was telling the story that happened to her when she was a kid but he had heard it so much many times growing up because she told it over and over again that he thought it was it had happened to him that's source amnesia you amnesia you forget the source of the information and Jean Piaget here's a picture of him right here he he's the guy you'll always recognize he has his hair slicked back and he wears these really uh, per perfectly circular glasses uh, developmental psychologist and uh, he comes up with the cognitive stages of development this is a picture of Elizabeth Loftus, who's the next one uh, that I have mentioned right here, Elizabeth Loftus. She's the psychologist who's still around at the California University of Irvine who talks about misinformation and false memories and the child, um, false child accusations and whatnot and how memories can be changed in trial and whatnot. Um, last, the last part of the chapter talks about ways to improve your memory. I just want to go over these real quick because one of the reasons I mentioned that we do this unit first is so that we can take what we know about memory and apply it to this class and to the rest of our schooling so that we can become more effective students. And here's uh, a few things that the book says that we can do to improve our memory uh, that is based off the research and things that we've already covered. Study repeatedly. You need to go over the, rehearse the information over and over again. One One study session doesn't do it. To take advantage you need little intervals over and over again and that'll make it more efficient. Two is to make the material meaningful. I talk about this a lot. We did the example in class where we had one half of the class making visual pictures, vivid images of their head as I read some things aloud and one half of the class just focusing on the words and the people who made it meaningful to them with the pictures in their head scored way better on the test that I gave you afterwards. A third thing is to activate retrieval cues. I give you those little pictures. Uh, that's a lot, how what I use a lot is I have pictures in my head that I try to use as retrieval cues and I draw pictures and I try to give you guys my examples of how I come up with this information. But you need to have something that helps you get that information. You don't necessarily have to remember everything, but if you have a little trigger that will help you, it will uh, benefit. Uh, fourthly, use a mnemonic device. Mnemonic devices are those little memory tricks. Um, last day you were supposed to have gone to a website and checked out some mnemonics 
uh, how to do it. It can be as easily as the Roy G. Biv one that he gives in the book uh, for the colors of the rainbow to uh, anything else. But they're little mnemonic devices. Minimize interference. You should be doing your studying without any other interference to take up your mind's attention. Your mind can only focus on one thing fully at one time. If you have more than one thing going on, it's not focusing on any one thing fully. So you shouldn't have Facebook open. You shouldn't be looking at Instagram. You shouldn't be having uh, crazy music on. You shouldn't be out in the living room with your family. If you can avoid any, the more things that you can avoid, the more things that you can minimize, the better your studying is going to be. It should be done right before sleep as well um, is, a, is a great time to do it. It doesn't have to be always done right before sleep, but before sleep is a great time because you immediately start to process that information while you're sleeping. Finally, um, sleep more. This one everybody gets and as a high school and college student in your future, you're going to have trouble doing this, but sleep is where your brain takes the information and um, processes it and it will be able to understand the information better and also retrieve the information better. And the last but not least, test your knowledge. Uh, over and over again. That's what flashcards are for. That's what the little quizzes in the study guide that I give you are all about. That's what the quiz at the end of the unit is all about. That's what the daily quizzes are about. It's to test, is to rehearse it and also to determine what you don't know. If you get something wrong on a test or a quiz or when you're studying it, you'll be able to go back and relearn that information. Um, finally, for the exam review um, is what we're going to be doing on Tuesday. There's no new reading on Monday night. It's just going to be taking the test uh, at the end of the chapter and um, doing exactly what we just said in that last bullet point, reviewing what we don't know and rehearsing what we do know. Monday night's homework then is that those practice tests. You also need to be working on your vocabulary cards and know them inside and out because you're going to have a vocabulary quiz on Tuesday, which is the day before the exam. Finally, finish your study guide. Rehearse, recall, repeat. Uh, that's it for today, and I'll see you probably after the next exam, and hopefully you did well. Study hard.